Good morning, all professors. I'm Stephen Wong from Bishop Hall Jubilee School. Today, I'm going to share my project on solving cubic pairs equation by bifurcating continued fraction. First of all, I would like to introduce what pairs equation is, followed by how people solved quadratic pairs equation, and lastly, how I tried to solve cubic pairs equation. Let's start by talking about the pairs equation. Pairs equation is a kind of Diophantin equations, equations in which only integer solutions are allowed. It appeared a long time ago, in the 17th century. One can define uh, the Pell's equation of degree n like this. Then let's talk about quadratic Pell's equation. A quadratic Pell's equation has the form like this, where d is a positive integer and is not a perfect square. For a positive solution pair x, y with minimum x, we call this solution a minimal solution or a fundamental solution. People made use of continued fraction and they successfully solved the quadratic Pell's equation. Suppose a1 is an integer and a2, a3 and so on are positive integers, then a fraction of this form is called a continued, simple continued fraction. Also, we call this fraction as the nth convergence to a continued fraction. The convergent is an approximation of the continued fraction. And we are curious about the formula for the nth convergent of a continued fraction. So we define two sequences of real numbers, Pn and Qn recursively like this, such that Pn over Qn is equal to the nth convergent to a continued fraction. It is found that the convergence have numerous properties. For example, we have this equation, which is very important for obtaining the quadratic Pell's equation. Next, it is found that the square root of d has a very nice representation. When d is a positive integer and is not a perfect square, then the square root of d has a, uh, has a representation like this, and which is a periodic continued fraction. Then the periodicity of the square root of d is a very important element for solving the quadratic Pell's equation. Then we are ready to solve the quadratic Pell's equation. By using the properties of the convergence and the periodic representation of the square root of d, we will finally come up to this theorem. Therefore, we are able to find the minimal solution to the quadratic Pell's equation by finding the continued fraction of the square root of d. Furthermore, by using this equation, we are able to find all the other positive solutions to the quadratic Pell's equation. And here is the outline of how people solve the quadratic Pell's equation. We have to first, first find a formula for the nth convergent, the properties of the convergence, as well as a periodic representation of the square root of d for a non-perfect square d. By using these results, we can obtain the minimal solution to the quadratic Pell's equation. The remaining step is to obtain all the other solutions. And now I'm going to introduce the cubic Pell's equation. In this project, I was trying to solve the cubic Pell's equation <coughs> using similar procedures. As the quadratic Pell's equation has the form x squared minus dy squared equals one, it is natural to choose the cubic Pell's equation as x cubed minus dy cubed equals one. However, it turns out that the solutions to this, to this equation are not very numerous and they do not exhibit the nice structure found in the quadratic case. Therefore, we will consider this equation to be the cubic Pell's equation. It has the form like this, where d is an integer and is not a perfect cube. It is a better analog that emits a theory comparable to the quadratic version. In this project, I was trying to use continued fraction to solve the cubic Pell's equation. However, it has not yet been found a method in order to generate a periodic continued fraction for, all, for every cubic irrationality. But by the work of Euler, Jacobi, and Perrin, we can use an extended version of continued fraction called bifurcating continued fraction um, to generate a couple, a couple of real numbers, a couple of cubic irrationality. And suppose a1, a2, b1, b2, and so on are real numbers, then this couple of fractions is called bifurcating continued fraction. And we call this 
fraction to be the nth convergence of a bifurcating canute fraction. Similar to the quadratic case, we have to find the formula for the nth convergence to a bifurcating canute fraction. We define three sequences of real numbers, AM, BN, and CN recursively like this, such that the couple AN over CN and BN over CN is the nth convergence to the bifurcating continued fraction. Again, the nth convergence is an approximation of the bifurcating continued fraction. Also, similar to the quadratic case, we have to find a represent periodic representation of the cubit of D. By the work of Ebrard, Barbaro, Ceruti, and Muru, it is found that when D is not a perfect cube, the couple cubit of D square and cubit of D has a very nice representation like this, where W is a non-negative integer. Next, we still need to find the properties of the convergence in order to solve the cubic Pell's equation. And I noticed that for the quadratic case, this expression is a determinant. Therefore, I tried to work out this determinant, and I found that this determinant is nicely equal to 1. Then, I made use of the periodic bifurcating continued fraction and the fact that D is, an, D is not a perfect cube to set up these six equations, six linear equations with six unknowns, and used Gaussian elimination to solve these six, un six unknowns in terms of A, M, B, N, and C, N and lastly, substituted them into this equation. And it, however, it doesn't give the desired cubic Pell's equation. It gives this equation instead. At that time, I was wondering why it's not equal to one, and it would be great if there was another periodic bifurcating continued fraction for the cubit of D. Then I noticed that the periodicity of the periodic bifurcating continued fraction can be shifted towards the right like this. A simple analog would be a recurring decimal. Therefore, I shifted the periodicity of the bifurcating continued fraction and obtained two more different bifurcating continued fractions. Then I found that for n not smaller than two, we have the following results. Particularly, when n not smaller than two is congruent to zero mod three, then a, m, b, n, and c, n are the solutions to the cubic Pell's equation. In this case, W can be any non-zero rational number. Lastly, if we find a set of solutions to the cubic Pell's equation, we can use this equation to find some of the other solutions. Here are the illustrations. For example, when D equals four, and if we take W equals two, then we can find that when N is congruent to zero mod three, uh, when n is congruent to 0 mod 3, a, m, b, n, and c, n are the solutions to the cubic Pell's equation. And particularly, when n is equal to 6, a, m, b, n, and c, n are the integer solutions to the cubic Pell's equation. Also, when d equals 6, and if we take w equals to negative 3, this time when n is congruent to 0 mod 3, a, m, b, n, and c, n are all integer solutions to the cubic Pell's equation. We can also find that the solutions generated by this method is very large. And it means that by using this method, even very large solutions can be generated efficiently. However, I observe that for a given W, not all solutions can be generated. And it is not sure that if this method can generate all the, all the other solutions to the cubic Pell's equation. Moreover, there are some limitations. Sometimes there may not be a non-zero rational W that can be chosen such that A, M, B, N, and C, N are both integers. And sometimes, although the required value exists, it is too, too difficult to be found. And as I've mentioned, this equation does not generate all the other solutions. The Cupid Pell's equation has possible application within approximation theory and cryptography. There, I think more investigation is worthy. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you.